Welcome to this episode of Real Chemistry. We're going to talk about how to do every single chemistry problem. Okay, that's kind of an exaggeration. Really what we're going to do is talk about how you can use conversion type problem solving to solve an enormous number of chemistry problems. So if you're in your first unit or two of chemistry, we often talk about doing conversions. And then in unit three, four, five, and six, we talk about molarity, density, molar mass, all these concepts that really, if you get conversions, you can already do. So the trick is, is that conversion factors are actually everywhere. And if you learn to identify them, then you can spot them and use them to solve all sorts of problems. Take, for example, density, right? So density is about how much stuff there is per volume. And when you see a density listed, it always has a unit of mass. So that's a unit of mass, which turns out to be grams in this case. And then it has a unit of volume. And in this case, it's in cubic centimeters, but they could be in anything, kilograms per liter, um, moles per milliliter, whatever that density is, it's some measure of the amount of stuff per volume. And what this density can actually do is it can go back and forth between grams and cubic centimeters. So you could go and find the equation for density, which is density equals mass over volume, and you could use some algebra and get some answer, but actually you don't need to do that. You can just remember that density is a conversion factor and what does it convert between? The mass unit and the volume unit. So this guy will go between grams and cubic centimeters. To be able to use it as a conversion factor, it's first useful to be able to write it as an equality. What that means is if you write this as an equality, I can say that 0 0.69 grams is equal to one cubic centimeter. So what that means is in the context of a problem with this density or a solution with this density, every single 0.69 grams you have is equal to one cubic centimeter. So the trick to writing this is you just take the unit on the bottom here and you put a one in front of it in your equality. So it's 0.69 grams to one cubic centimeter. Now I could use that and write a conversion factor like this and say I'm going from five grams and I wanna to go to cubic centimeters. Well now I put 0 0.69 grams on the bottom and one cubic centimeter up top. So what we're gonna do in the rest of the video is I'm gonna look at a few more other numbers that are also secretly conversion factors, and then we're gonna use those to solve a bunch of problems. So here are five different other numbers that are secretly conversion factors. And if you train yourself to see them as conversion factors, you can solve tons of problems. The first is density, we already talked about that. The second is molarity. You might not get to this till a while later on in chemistry, but it's about how much stuff there is in a solution. But you don't even need to know that. You just need to know that this 7.2 moles per liter is a conversion factor. What does it convert between? Once again, between the unit here and the unit there, it will go back and forth between moles and liters. And if we wanna use that in a conversion problem, it's helpful to write that as 7.2 moles equals one, notice we always put the one in front of that bottom unit, liter. So that molarity will go back and forth between moles and liter. One note on molarity, you have to be a little extra clever sometimes to spot this as a conversion factor because a big M means molarity. And that's exactly the same as putting moles per liter. So you can always write from a molarity 7.2 moles equals one liter or whatever the molarity is in terms of moles equals one liter. Okay, and next we have a speed. A speed, 10.2 meters per second. Or we could have 60 miles per hour, whatever. The point there is there's two units and that speed will go between them. So we could write an equality and then use that as a conversion factor. 10.2 meters equals one second. Same with drug doses. So very often in chemistry problems, you'll have a dose of a certain amount of medicine, and you can recognize that secretly is a conversion factor. And this one will go between milligrams and kilograms. Very specifically with drug doses, this is milligrams of, of medicine, and this is kilograms of body weight. So two different types of masses there. It's saying that if you have someone who weighs 100 kilograms, they need to take 3.2 milligrams per every single one of those kilograms. And it will go back and forth between milligrams and kilograms. Molar mass, a really common number you'll see in chemistry that's really important for conversions, 12.02 grams per mole. What does that go between? Grams and moles. So whenever you can start looking at numbers like this and realize that secretly those are conversion factors that go between those two units, you can save yourself a lot of time. So this would be 12.02 
grams equals one mole. And now I can use that equality as a conversion factor. Okay, we're gonna work one example problem here, and then I'll post a second video where we work some longer, more complicated example problems using this same stuff. So this problem says how many moles of copper are in 32.4 grams? And it tells me the molar mass of copper, that's Cu, is 63.546 grams per mole. Now maybe you've never studied moles. Maybe you have no idea what they are. Well, you can still do this problem if you identify the conversion factors. So here's the steps we're gonna break these problems down to. One, identify the conversion factors, okay? So we're looking here for something that has two units by it. So 32.4 grams just has one unit, grams. On the other hand, 63, 0.546 has two units, grams and moles. And notice we're asked about moles and we're given grams. So this is actually gonna be really important. So we've recognized now that that is a conversion factor, the 63.546 grams per mole. And now we're gonna write that as an equality, 63.546 grams equals one mole. All right, now we're ready to go ahead and start the conversion problem. We wanna identify the starting quantity. So we've done step one, step two is identify the starting quantity. There's only one other number in this problem, so it's pretty easy to realize we should start there. So we're gonna start with 34.2 grams, and now we wanna to get to moles. That's what the problem asks for. So we write our moles over here, and we need to get rid of grams, so grams has gotta go there, and moles here. And now using the conversion factor we wrote earlier, we can actually recognize that with grams should go 63.54. And with milliliters, or I'm sorry, with moles should go a one. And so we divide 34.2 by 63.541. And once we've rounded to three sig figs, we'll get 0 0.538. Now, at this point, you may have no idea what a mole is, but you just solved a problem with it. We followed the units through the problem, the grams canceled out, and we got moles. So this is how you can use conversion factors, which are secretly tucked away in tons of chemistry problems, to be able to solve an enormous number of chemistry problems. I hope this was helpful. If you want more examples of how to do this, check out my next video, which I'll link to below, and that will go through a few more practice problems using the same approach.